Hello and good afternoon to my fellow engineers. Um, you might remember from the last video that we created two parts. We created the leg part for our table, and we created the base panel for our table. And um, and I said that the uh, the other parts that you could go away and work out the dimensions to, um, if you're following along or whatever. Um, and what I might do at the uh, the end of this uh, the beginnings beginner series sort of thing, like this basics pack, I might put a very quick video um, with a with a picture of the um, of all the dimensions. But I am um, I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to give you some time to work out all the dimensions if you haven't yet already. And um, so we're going to use these six parts here, and we're going to make the uh, this table. And it's it's going to look a little bit nicer than this table, but we're going to make this table. This is the table that we created uh, in the part. Uh, file using uh, these overall dimensions. This was when we made it in the uh, second video, uh, made in, making the table out of uh, a solid part. And we said that that was a that was a bad engineering practice because it had to be made out of a big solid piece of wood. Whereas if we made it all out of parts, out of like panels, it could be flat packed. It was easier to manufacture. It'd be cheaper, um, and uh, and it would just generally be more likely and more feasible. So um, before I get started on that. I did say in the last video that I would uh, show you guys how to trans uh, transition between synchronous and ordered um, as a default value because in, in, in all the parts, um, in all the parts, all the times that we have to make a new part file, we have to uh, transition between uh, synchronous and ordered every time. But I'll show you how to change those default values now. So if you go to the uh, the um, solid edge file section up here and go to solid edge options. Uh, You've got these options, and and I wouldn't change too many of these if I were you, because you might uh, run into difficulties, and, uh, and I, I know I have in the past, uh, quite uh, foolishly. But um, if you go down to helpers, and uh, it, if it's on, if it's selected on synchronous, uh, it means that when you open a part, it will be in synchronous mode. If you go from synchronous to ordered, that means from now on it will uh, default to ordered, um, so that you can. Uh, you know, by, by default, it'll open up a, uh, in the ordered environment. So last uh, last week we made this base panel and this leg uh, part, um, and I went away and I, I uh, made a top board, um, a middle panel, a side panel, um, and a dowel rod to connect it all together. And I did say that we, in reality, you'd probably connect it all together with uh, screws um, nowadays. But um, uh, definitely, uh, when it comes to flat packing, it's it's quite common to get dowel rods. At least for some of the components, and uh, a dowel rod is basically just a cylindrical piece of uh, wood that you put a little bit of glue around, um, and you can stick parts together. And they're in flat pads; they are um, you know, extremely common. So we're just going to use dowel rods for everything. We're not going to introduce screws at all. But um, in reality, you probably would have to introduce screws, and we'll we'll look at screws in future episodes as well as how to make screws, how to use screws, and and where else you can get screws. So we made all of our parts um, in the isometric part environment, actually making them as .par solid edge files, uh, which are part files. Um, and you might remember from the first video that I said that you make all of your parts um, and then you assemble them together using the assembly. So that's what that's the environment we're going to be working in today. We're going to be working in the assembly environment. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to open up the isometric assembly. So uh, what you'll notice uh, first of all in the assembly environment, not the part environment. Is um, that the uh, top panel looks uh, very different? Um, you've got stuff like select and sketch is the same, but apart from that, except for maybe orient and style, everything is uh, different. In uh, the part environment, you you're creating parts, so you're using uh, extrude and cut and stuff like that to to make parts. Um, whereas in the assembly environment, you're not making any parts; you're just putting parts that you've already made together. Um, so for that. Uh, so, so we don't use uh, the extrude or cut. We just uh, use um, assignments to to put parts together. Now, the way that Solid Edge likes to put its parts together is using something called relationships. So, I'll start uh, before I, before I make any relationship. I'll kind of explain. I'll give you an analogy of what a, a relationship is in Solid Edge. If you have a like a notepad or a notebook or something or like a, you know something rectangular on your desk where you're sitting, I want you to imagine that you you've got that note, notebook flat on your desk. So that's one relationship, the fact that it's flat on your desk. One side is in contact with another side. A second relationship would be to put the binding of the book or, or, or the edge of the notepad against the edge of the table. So now it's fixed along that edge of the table, 
um, parallel, and it's also fixed to the desk, desk, so it can slide around now in only one axis. Now, if you make uh, uh, the um, perpend uh, one of the perpendicular sides of the notepad or book, uh, uh, you know, connected to one of the perpendicular sides of the table, it's now fixed in that corner of the table. It can't move at all because of those relationships. And that's the way that Solid Edge works. That's the way that we're going to connect the parts together in Solid Edge. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and, uh, and introduce our first part. Um, now the, we'll introduce the, um, the the base panel that we worked with uh, last lesson, last uh, video. Um, so we're just going to drag that in. And this was the base panel that we made last lesson. So um, uh, you, you might remember how we, how we made all this um, and what each everything does. So this is the base panel. Um, and the way that you introduce a product is you, you just click it, hold your mouse down, and then drag it out. Um, and the first part that we're going to introduce is the leg, which is also something that we made in the last panel. So we'll click and drag that onto the, uh, the table. Um, and obviously at the minute there are no, no relationships. It's uh, arbitrarily just been put somewhere on the work environment. We need to make a relationship between that leg and the table. Um, and you always make the relationship starting with whatever piece you've got selected. So in this case, my leg is, is selected, which is why it's green. And we want we want the leg to be attached to the underside, so we'll just dive right in and we'll we'll collect we'll uh, uh, select by clicking the um, the uh, top of the leg, and we want that to be assigned to the base of the uh, of the base panel. The second assignment we want to make is we want this front panel to be in line with this front panel, like so. And finally. One of the other ways you can do it is an axial alignment. So, um, if you if you um, imagine a cylinder and then a second cylinder of any other size, you can make the two center points match up. And in this case, they're the same size because um, it's a dowel joint rod. So, um, uh, this axial alignment you just select by collecting the inside of the cylinder. You want to align in there as well. So that's our first table leg in the right place. And you'll see if you look down this hole that line there defines the, uh, the the meeting point and that axial alignment is there. So we're just going to do the same thing for the uh, the other legs. Okay, now what's happened here is that the axial alignment, the, the sorry, the planar alignment that I made isn't is in fact correct. It does in fact work, but um, it's obviously just on the wrong side. And if that happens, all you need to do is click flip, and it will flip on the most on the previous alignment there. So then we want that axial alignment as well. There you go, and that's our second table leg. Just quickly do these other two as well. Okay, so that's, those are the legs introduced. Now it just looks a bit like a coffee table or a simple platform. Um, and it, 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 we need to add the side panels and the, and the center pieces now. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to introduce, we're going to do the dowel joints in a little bit. We're, we'll do those at the end um, because there are so many of them. I won't do all of them. I'll just show you a couple of them, how to get you started. Um, so we're going we're gonna to introduce the side panel next. You've got to kind of do this chronologically. We obviously can't introduce the... Um, the uh, middle panel until the side panels are there because we don't know where it's going to go. Okay, so we've connected the, the the inside to that side. Now it's going to be quite difficult for me to select that that cylinder, the inside of the cylinder. I mean, I'm I'm getting the ring, or I'm getting the outside, but I'm not getting the inside of the cylinder. So the way that we can go around that is if you select roughly where you think your feature is, this uh, this little icon here next to my mouse will show up after a few seconds. That means that you can uh, you can select features that can't be seen. So in this case, I've just gone ahead and selected that axial cylinder um, in that part, and I'm going to do the same for that part there. 
So that's just achieved by clicking the right mouse button. Um, not straight away, you've got to wait uh, about a second or a second and a half before it works. But um, yeah, So about one Mississippi, I'd say. And there you go, there's the side panels, and it's starting to look a little bit more like a table. Um, and then now we're going to introduce that middle panel there, which is acts like the shelf. So we're going to introduce that middle panel. Um, and now we're going to introduce the uh, the top. Now, I don't know if you remember but one of the videos recently, I can't remember which one, I think it was the second or third one. Um, I said that I was going to be a little bit lazy and I was just going to use the, uh, the base panel as the uh, top panel and then I was going to put a top board on top of that. And that's quite common, that's quite common on tables. Um, so that's what we're just going to go ahead and do and now. And I'm just going to introduce the base panel again. And this allows us, effectively, um, the, the idea of having uh, multiple panels. Um, you know, using the same part multiple times allows us to make um, something that's used extremely common. So, to give it an extreme example, like a screw, um, you only have to make the screw once, but you can use a thousand of them when designing a plane or something. So there you go. That's um, that's the shelving system. It looks uh, you know, it looks it looks it looks nice. Um, we're just going to introduce that top panel to give it a little bit more of an idea of what it should look like. Uh, and as I said, um, I'll, uh, I'll um, do a video at the end with all these dimensions, if so required. Just select that. I can't want them to be right clicking. And we want that one to be... Now we need to mate the underside of those two together, the underside of that, and the top of that. So there you go. No, there we have it. Um, at the minute, it's not held together. It's remarkable that it's staying like that. Um, uh, and the, the way that we're going to stick it together, as I said, we're going to use these dowel rods. And I just made these dowel rods uh, very quickly. They're just um, 10 millimeter um, diameter cylinders extruded to 40 millimeter in length. And I'm not going to do all of them, but I'll do uh, I'll do a couple of them. just to show you how they're going to be positioned, so there you go, that's them positioned. And they've chosen 40mm because um, you know this section is 20mm and that section is 20mm, so it's flush on both sides. And I'm not going to do all of these ones, I'm just going to show you a couple, uh, probably two, and then it's it's up to you to go ahead and uh, put the rest in um, in future. And there you, there you have it, so that's, that's effectively the table that we've made. Um, just to give you a general overview on, on the size, if you go to simulation geometry, that's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 along from home, um, and if we, we just select the uh, distance between tool again, you can set the very, very top and that very, very bottom gives us 680, and we'll do, I think, it, I think we used uh, that side and that side, and that little image that we showed you at the beginning. So if we do that, so uh, it's not great, but the, the layout of that dimension, I'll see if I can strike that along. Like that. Okay, so that's basically just showing us what the overall dimensions are, and that was achieved using the uh, distance between tool, uh, which is very similar to the uh, distance between tool that we used in the part. And that's the general dimensions. It looks a little bit different uh, um, in terms of just like where the legs are situated um, and how I've rounded stuff. Um, but I, I just you know I, I uh, did the the uh, this image beforehand. Um, I did this image beforehand. This this is just the part file. It uh, looks quite bland, whereas this is the uh, final file. But it looks uh, quite a bit nicer. Um, I'm just go ahead and uh, redo those. Uh, introduce all of those dowel joints. Um, in the uh, in the next video, I'm going to give a quick overview on drafting. Um, drafting is 
uh, how I created uh, this document to give you the overall dimensions. I'll show you how to get the overall dimensions and uh, individual, individual dimensions as well. And it'll just be a very quick overview on drafting. I'm not going to go into it in too much detail, but um, I'll show you some of the cool things that you can do and some of the useful things that you can do with that. Um, so, uh, yeah, look forward to that.